This video demonstration will walk you through creating a Google Docs form to be used by a WordPress blog instead of using a contact form plugin for WordPress. The advantage of using a Google Doc form is that you can embed the same form in multiple WordPress blogs uh, very easily, as well as you can keep track of everybody who submits a form through Google Docs without having to keep track and, and store all the email files that you will receive. The first thing you're going to want to do is go into Google Docs website, docs.google.com. After you sign in with your Google account, you'll click on Create New, and you want to select Form. Here you'll be pre presented with a basic form page, and you'll start entering the form title over here. So let's say Contact Me will be the name of the form title. If you want to fill out a paragraph that displays before your form, you can use this form to contact me ask me a question or get a price quote, a simple description that you might want to use for your form. And here you would start setting up your sample questions. They give you a default sample question one that's a text type question. So you could either leverage that like name, please enter your name, uh, but please enter your first and last name for the description. And then it's a text question. You want to make this a required question, you would say done, and then you'll see the form field here. If you at any time you want to sample to see what your form looks like, you just control click on the link down here to open it in a new tab, and it shows you what your sample form looks like so far. So for this basic test, let's do some basic form settings. So we'll do name, please enter your first and last name, and question two will edit with the pencil button, email. email please enter email address and then we'll make that a required question as well we will add a new question a new item let's say multiple choice we'll say reason for contacting and maybe option one would be advertising and then we'll say option two would be feedback option three could be purchase a review and let's just say that's an example. And we'll make that required that they have to select. Or we can even do add other and their own answer as a last one. Make this required. Click done. Again, we can preview the form, see what it looks like. All right, so we've got a basic contact me form with a name, email, reason for contacting. And we can also add one more field. Let's do a paragraph text and put details, add additional details or notes there and that doesn't have to be required so now we have a sample form from Google Docs very basic white background they ask for the user's name email uh, them to select a reason for contacting and details what you're gonna want to do probably is use a nice little colored theme you can use a white background if you want to keep it plain I tend to like uh, using one of the themes that they have so you click on the theme and select what theme you think looks good or fits well with your blog. Try to choose something that matches your blog color. You could do something for the holidays. You could uh, choose any one of these themes that you think fits for your blog. So there's 71 themes right now on Google. So let's choose a sample theme. Uh, let's choose, uh, since I'm going to test on a white blog, I'll choose the grayscale theme as a test. And then I'll do another preview to see what it looks like. So that's a good uh, a sample theme here. So I'll apply the theme. Then I will you know, look at the preview, see what the theme looks like. And that's going to be what the contact form looks like. Looks pretty good. The next thing I'm going to want to do is <clears throat> select more actions and select edit confirmation. This is the message that displays to the user who submits the form. The default is thanks, your response will now appear in my spreadsheet. You might not want to say that. You want to say thank you for contacting me. I will get back with you shortly or whatever, something like that. You don't want to typically want to let a user see response summary, but you can. If you check mark this, they will basically see a summary of everything they entered. Uh, click save to make sure that saves as part of the document. And then you should be good to go with your form. Now all you need to do is click on more actions, embed, 
and you're provided with this Google embed code. So you're gonna to wanna to copy this iframe code with the browser. You're gonna go over your WordPress blog. You're gonna open up your page and you're gonna edit your page. You wanna make sure you are on the HTML tab. The visual tab does not support the iframe tag. So if you actually put this code in the HTML tab and then you click over to your visual tab, it'll break the iframe code and then your, your iframe form won't work. So you'll have to do it manually. The other thing you wanna do is, instead of having the width of 760, which is too wide for most blogs, set the width to 100%. This makes it go as wide as it can go inside the, the constraints of your actual blog post field. So by setting the width to 100%, it'll fill 100% of the width of your actual post or page area of your blog, and it won't run over, it won't expand past your, into your sidebars or anything. So 100% is a really good thing to set the width to. So what we want to do now is preview how it looks on our contact page inside of our post. And you can see the website load, and you can see the contact me form is loaded right here with the scroll bars by default. And it looks pretty good embedded into a form. The only thing you'll notice is I tend to not like this scroll bar over here. So what I like to do is actually set scrolling equals no, and then re-preview it. And you get a little bit extra width because it removes the scroll bars and then you can see the, more of the form. And you don't really need to use scrolling unless you use exceptionally wide or exceptionally long forms. But this now gives you a complete form on your blog that they could fill out these and click the submit button and you'll get information. The last thing you wanna do is go back to your form itself in Google Docs, click on the owned by me, and let that load up and edit your new form just by clicking on it and you want to click on tools and then you want to click on notification rules here you want to click on a user submits form and email me right away and save it that way when a user clicks on the submit button you get an email to your gmail account that somebody's contacted you if you don't set the notification then the only way you know you receive con you receive form notices is if you actually check your Google Docs every day or every couple hours. So it's but I like setting up an email confirmation to know when I get a Google form. The really nice thing about Google Docs it, for tracking your comment, uh, your comments or your uh, feedback or contact forms is I'll show you when I load up a previous contact form I created. You can see all the entries of users who's entered their contact information the reason for contact and the details, and it keeps track of timestamp of when you've been contacted. This is really good if you get contacted often and you need to keep track of it in a database. Instead of having to keep track of emails, you can easily uh, you know, keep it on record. You can right click on your document and you can, um, you can hide it if you want. You could uh, start, you could share it so that other people can edit or view your document if you need to. Um, because it uses Google Docs, uh, it has a lot of power if you have multiple authors via a blog. You can collaborate with other people to help you run the contact form and maintain replying to people who use the contact form. Um, that's basically all there is to show you about the Google contact form. Again, this is a very simplistic form that I created. You can obviously create a lot more advanced forms and a lot more advanced fields. There's a lot more options to choose from. You can use that same HTML tag code to put that same form in every single blog you own. I find that really good because that means everybody who contacts me, whether it's on my justinjamino.com, my wanderthrust.com, or my dragonblogger.com, all those submit buttons go into the same spreadsheet so I know who contacted me, what blog they used, what they requested, and it's a really good way to keep track of all your uh, users who try to submit feedback or contact you. This has been a Dragon Blogger video presentation of Google Docs and using the forms in a WordPress blog. Let me know what you think. Thank you. Bye-bye.